assembly please come to order would you lead us in the pledge please for sure I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. We're going to uh, get our uh, law enforcement report. And while we're doing that, please review the minutes. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. So happy to see everybody here. Hopefully, everybody had a great holiday, ate a lot of food, and enjoyed family. Um, it's a beautiful day out. Hopefully the weekend remains the same. You know, we kind of live for these days when it's nice outside, it's not so humid, it's nice and cool out. You know, we want to stay outside for those days. A um, couple of things, you know, our year end has now ended for the sheriff's office. Um, so there's a lot of statistical data coming in um, that we look over because we want to see what our crime trends are, um, what our district initiative will be for 2023. Um, we talk about those areas in crime um, that may have seen a little uptick, a little increase, um, and it's stuff that we need to address throughout 2023, so we try to decrease those numbers. You know, I'm really proud to say that, you know, within the North region here, um, and I'm sure Captain Palinswell, when he has been here, has spoke about this, you know, the Sheriff's Office is broken into four different regions. We have a South region, with South end of the county, West, we have the East region, which is um, some of West Palm, south of Belvedere Road. And then the North region is what um, I cover with Captain Palenzuela, which runs from Belvedere Road all the way up to Jupiter. And geographically, that's, that's a pretty large area. I think we'd all agree on that. Um, the North region doesn't go too far out west, but we come close to about 441. And then we have some pockets on the east side of I-95. So as you can see, um, we have quite a bit of area to cover. Now with that, because we have that large geographical area, you know, our crime statistics are super important to us. Um, and we come out and we address the crime statistics uh, based on intelligence, suspect data, um, and ev everything that we can gather to try to, um, to solve the crimes. I will tell you that my region was up in four crime categories this year where the rest of the sheriff's office was between seven and 10 crime categories up. So I can tell you that us in the North region being up in only four crime categories, and, and most of those are, are property type crimes, you know, your thefts, your shopliftings, um, your car burglaries, um, that's really outstanding. Um, and I also, I'm, I'm gonna gloat a little bit, um, the North region for the county in final statistics for traffic homicides and serious car crashes, we were at 13%, which is amazing. We were, there was nobody even close to us in the rest of the regions. They were way, way, way higher. Thank you, we appreciate that. Listen, you know, we take pride in looking at that data and how can we combat some of these problems, right? You know, when myself and the captain and the major come here and talk to you, we talk a lot about the traffic issues, right? The speeders, the people running the stop signs, the careless drivers, and we can go on and on and on about it. You know, we come here each month, we come in here and we do enforcement. There's people that do get cited for their actions. There are some that get written warnings um, from our traffic units, but I will tell you that you have one of the most dedicated traffic units on both the motorcycle side, our motorcycle deputies, and the deputies that are assigned to our traffic unit in the north region here that are very dedicated and committed, um, and they work very, very hard. Now, we come back to the geographical area because, you know, I'm sure you'd love them to be in here every day but sometimes that's just not so possible. I have to be honest with you that there are other um, constituents throughout the county that have complaints on traffic that we have to also address from here all the way up to the Jupiter side. So really good, outstanding numbers for the year. Could we improve? 
A hundred percent. And we could always improve. We always talk about the ways to do that and the ways to bring these numbers down. But these numbers that I tell you are super important to us, and I'm sure they're always important to you. You know, we can affect behavior, right? If there's a traffic problem, we put patrol cars out there and you see lights, um, what do you automatically do? You slow down, right? You know, because you don't want to go, you know, 80, 90 miles an hour past, you know, a sheriff's deputy or a Florida, Florida Highway Patrol trooper because they're going to pull out and come after you next, right? So we can affect the behavior by people seeing us out there and being visible to everybody. And we hope that the crashes go down, the traffic homicide numbers where the people unfortunately are deceased, that goes down. But we achieved something really great this year for 2022, and we want to continue that for 2023. Okay, off on my, uh, my little soapbox here. Let me get my iPad going here, and I'll go over everything. So it was actually, um, December was actually a pretty good month. Um, we, at the sheriff's office, we heavy load throughout December, um, and mostly along the Okeechobee corridor. So pretty much east of 441 to I-95, where all the businesses are and stuff like that, because what usually happens this time of year is you have a lot of people that are out here committing theft. You know, they're going to the businesses, um, they're shoplifting, um, they're, do they're breaking into cars, and they're doing all kinds of these things. So we heavy load the deputies into these areas to kind of quell that, that issue, and we did a really great job of that again. Um, but here in Century Village, it was actually a good month. Um, somebody reported a vehicle burglary in Canterbury J on 1212 where a wallet was taken from an unlocked vehicle. Now we all know, and I mentioned that, our crime statistics, one area that we do have problems with on occasion are the car burglaries because it's an easy crime to commit when people leave their cars unlocked. But not only do they leave them unlocked, but they leave valuables in there. And the valuables include a wallet that this person in Canterbury lost, guns, money, information, and people take that stuff and then they use it. So lock your cars and stop leaving your valuables in your cars. I mean, it's so easy for me to stand in front of you and tell you this, but it really will, will stop a lot of the nonsense if you just lock your cars at night or when you're coming in and out from your residence. Make sure it's locked. You know, hit your little remote before you go to bed one more time. Make sure it's locked and make sure you have your stuff out of the car. And if you're not comfortable where you go into a shopping center and you do have valuables, put them in your trunk. Lock it in your trunk so nobody can look in your car and see the stuff sitting there. So real simple things. Um, I, I, another area that, that I'm, I'm very proud of, at least for this month, and I hope to continue this trend, is the fraud cases. So I've come up here, I've told you guys about the fraud, tens of thousands of dollars people are losing, right? Well, we really didn't have that problem in December, so that's outstanding. So hopefully we can continue this throughout 2023. Um, there was actually one person that lives over in Kent, um, a romance scam where the victim, yeah, we've heard those before, uh, the victim sent several gift cards to a woman to purchase a plane ticket to visit him from Ghana. Okay, so, prince. yeah, it was the prince, right? Yeah, 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 so, um, didn't work out so well for this person that is now in the loss of $1,500. Um, hopefully that person has learned that lesson that that romance scam when someone lives, you know, halfway across the other side of the world and they're asking for gift cards, they're not coming to visit you, for sure. Um, for calls for service, um, actually not too bad. So in December, we had 215 calls for service and of that, uh, 41 cases were actually police reports. Um, nothing really... Um, of any type of critical information to pass along. You know, there was some alarms, neighbor disputes, um, 911 calls, which are normally 911 hangups um, that we end up going to. And the traffic report, so, 
I'm sorry. So for uh, crashes, we had four crashes. That's about average. I mean, listen, I'd like to get, I'd like to get it down to none. Um, if you all, you all can help me with that, right? Um, before we had, and for citations, we had 30 citations written. Now remember, and I think the month previous to that, we were over 100. Remember that? That was a lot, right? We 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 came in here and hit it really hard. And on the written warnings, we were 28. So um, listen, my guys don't like writing people tickets on holidays. They just don't. You know, we have a heart too, right? You know, it'd be easy for us to just write tickets to everybody. You know, everybody's looking to see their families and they need money to buy presents and to travel and stuff. And then, you know, here comes one of our deputies hiding behind a tree, watches you run a stop sign and it's a $200 fine. You know, not too cool, right? So we do have a heart also. Um, so those, those decreased a little bit. Um, I can't promise you where they're going to be next month, but I can tell you that, you know, one of our traffic initiatives is to come into Century Village and enforce the traffic law. So with that being said, I, I don't think I have to go too much further into that, um, but just know that we're going to be visible in here. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions for me this morning? Sir. I saw it. Good morning. You were talking earlier about controlling the behavior. How are we controlling the behavior of those brazen uh, criminals who break into police officers' cars? If they're breaking into your car, they can easily break into so What are we doing about that? You know, it's a, it's a really interesting question. You know, do we have a problem where we have rogue groups that do break into our cars? We do. Um, it's happened for marked police cars and unmarked police cars, you know, our undercover cars. Um, usually we have very good leads, um, and everybody knows that with um, science the way it is now, um, with DNA and continuing with fingerprints and intelligence, um, we've had a very good record on arresting those that take our stuff. Now, um, we do secure our weaponry if we don't have um, proper security in our vehicles. We're supposed to take it into our houses at night. Obviously, we don't want to be the ones that are going to leave a rifle or a shotgun or a handgun in a car that's going to be used against us later. With that being said, um, the patrol cars do have locking mechanisms um, for the rifles and the shotguns. Um, but like anything else, you know, if you if you try hard enough, you're going to defeat it, right? Um, you know, usually the criminals, they want to get in and out. They want to grab and go quickly um, because they don't want to be seen. So the chances of them trying to defeat our locking mechanism um, is usually very small. But they, 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 they have before, and they have gotten weapons. And unfortunately, these weapons end up in the wrong hands. They end up involved in other criminal activity. Um, and at some point, we kind of come across them. Um, not in the right way, but we come across them in a traffic stop or in a search warrant that we do on a house, and we're able to recover it and make arrests. But we've had really good successes um, in arresting those that are, that are out there doing it. The unmarked cars, listen, they, they don't know one car from another car. They're just breaking into cars and you know, they break into an unmarked police car, and, you know, to them, it's, you know, it's Christmas time to some people. So, good question, sir. Let me come to you so I can bring you the, the microphone so everybody can hear you. <clears throat> there used to be a three-number number that we could dial on our phone to let them, let some person know about um, backup on the road. And it's usually due to a rogue light, something that's gone wrong. Because sometimes we sit through two and even three rounds at the Okeechobee gate. I can't speak to Haverhill as well. Um, what is that number still in existence? So, you know, you're going to stump me on this one. So usually the emergency operations center the traffic division in the emergency operations center they're the ones responsible for traffic control um, a three digit number and if i'm not mistaken and i could be wrong i don't know if it was 211 it might be it's not 211 
Okay, thank you for correcting me. I don't, I don't know, other than 911, and I know there is a 211 for something county related. Social work, okay, yep, I, 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 I remain corrected. Yeah, I, I don't think there is, but if there is an issue, if you just call the sheriff's office non-emergency number and tell um, the call taker at the sheriff's office, we will then forward that information over to the county or emergency ops center. And um, you know, those lights sometimes, you know, they, they don't cycle the right way. Um, you sit through two or three um, cycles through it. It, it. it does happen throughout the county. Um, but county operations, the traffic division, they're the ones that handle that. All right. Oh, I got to walk all the way over there? Okay. It's okay. I'll come to you. I need exercise. It's because the person that's first in line, we found that they're not pulled up far enough for the light, so it won't change. So if you can get around them and maybe, or toot your horn if you don't scare them or whatever, but it's just because they're not pulled up far enough. That's a good idea. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't so, yeah, sometimes if you're ahead of the stop bar, everybody knows the stop bar, right? That big, thick, white line. Um, sometimes I think there's like a magnetic something in the roadway that kind of knows when there's a car there. Um, so uh, the stop bar, if they're way ahead of that stop bar, sometimes it doesn't cycle right. Any other questions or anything I can answer for anybody? Down you here. have a question over here, sir. All right. Here you go, sir. They are making me work today. It's okay. Hi. This month I was a victim of uh, bleach checks, two bleach checks that were drawn on uh, Chase Bank. One was for $9,200 and another was for 1650 so, so, so this gentleman here is the victim of check washing. Um, so what happens is if you send a check somewhere, you put it in your mailbox, you have somebody that takes that check. Basically, the ink that you write your check on, they wash the ink out and rewrite it to somebody in a criminal enterprise, and then they remove the money in this gentleman. So did you make a report of that, sir? Okay. He went through Chase. Okay. Okay. Did Chase reimburse you? Meeting could have been over. Ah, uh, Chase caught it. Ah, see, there you go. Chase, good bank. I have Chase also. Um, well, you know, on those cases, um, when they then tried to redeposit it, we just worked a case um, where somebody did that. They stole some business checks from a business, and um, the person filled them out, and we figured out who it was. Um, we actually arrested him this week, but um, sometimes those cases are very hard to solve, um, you know, but criminals aren't the brightest people either, and, uh, you know, hopefully they, they, they slip up and make a mistake, and uh, we come knocking on their door and put them away for a while and let the justice system handle it from there. So I'm glad that you got your money back, though. Any other questions? Anything else I can answer? Oh, here we go. Here you go, sir. I'll, I'll give it to you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Les Lerman, 100 Stratford H. I've lived in the village in the same unit for the last 13 years almost. This is my first trip up to this microphone. I've been here almost every delegates meeting, but this is important. I come to give warning, and the um, Palm Beach Sheriff's people have been over to my unit several times in the past month alone. Les, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you no, right there. No, no. No, no, it's, Les, we're going to turn the mic. Marsha Adler, Marsha uh, Adler. Les, she, stop it now. Serial. If you do that. Stop it now. If, if you don't let me stop, speak. Stop it now. There, well, talk to you, outside. you could talk outside no, 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 with, no, no, with no, the no, officer, no. There but is a not serial person that is destroying Les, property, Les, going around from unit to unit. She's now in East Chester with her next victim. Could you kill that mic, please? If you don't, take his mic, Captain. You don't let me talk. If you want, you come to the security committee meeting. Okay, come to the security meeting and let them. Les? Okay, Les, come to the security meeting. It's one o'clock today. And after, let the people that are on the board, let them deal with that and I will be there too, okay? That's the way we're gonna handle it today. That's the right way. They have a big meeting to go ahead. No, no. Thank you, Lieutenant. Okay, okay. 
<laughs> less, less. It's okay, buddy. Uh, she could dance Steve, all she wants. Steve, would it's you okay. escort okay. Les out of the meeting, please? Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. okay. This is not the venue. It's not the place right now. I'm not a venue. I'm trying to warn, have people okay. warn people. Let, let, okay. Let, let, it's okay. Les, it's okay, buddy. Mm -hmm. It. Listen, you come to the security Take meeting. Them it's, out, it's, it's okay. Take them out. It's okay. Take a deep breath and sit and enjoy yourself. Take them out. Les, we have a meeting to go. Steve, okay. please remove You're Les from the meeting. with their investigation. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 511 for the number for traffic ops. Okay. I am going to depart. <laughs> and I'm going to see everybody next month. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for me being able to talk to you guys. I enjoy coming here. I enjoy talking to everybody. And uh, thank you to the board. Have a good day. Do we have any corrections to the minutes as presented? Could I have a motion to accept those minutes from someone? George, second. Bobby, thank you. Um, Dave is, Dave is continuing to recover, but you could see that he's not here. Uh, Donald and I and uh, Patricia see him on a regular basis, and we try to keep him informed of what's going on in, uh, in Century Village. Um, personally, I would like to thank the volunteers, the people that have come to the uh, UCO office and offered to uh, help out in various positions. Um, to volunteer at the UCO office, you must be a unit owner. And occasionally we have someone, that means that you gotta be on the deed and you have to be a unit owner. We have people that are coming in that are renters that are not unit owners or have uh, looking f to do things that we currently do not have, but I thank you for coming and volunteering. We do have uh, at least a half a dozen people that have come to the office to uh, make us aware that they're willing to volunteer. Uh, all right. We'll start with uh, Joanne. Oh, we have a quorum of 138, uh, 137 people. Thank you. <clears throat> That's one less than last month. Go ahead, Joanne. Thank you all for coming. Um, that's great that we have uh, such great turnouts each month. Um, the only thing that I want to talk about this month is, you know, it's that time of year where we're having our annual meetings for our associations. And when you elect new officers, we really need you to fill out the, the form and bring it over to UCO so that you have representation here and that you have you know, your delegate and your alternate delegates. You can have as many alternates as you like, but you wanna make sure that you, you always have someone coming here so that we do have such you know, great turnouts. Um, so I just wanted to remind everybody, it's that time of year to look at that paperwork. I know Carolyn has been sending out um, emails recently to some of the associations whose paperwork is a little outdated. So if you can just make sure that your president um, makes that form out and brings it over to the office. Um, we wanna make sure our records are all accurate. But that's about it. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, Dominic. Good morning. I haven't spoken for a while. Uh, I'm, I'm recovering from COVID, so I may even screw things up right now. Um, Century Village is based on people who are over 55 and are still working. The problem that, that I see at, at UCO, and I'm, I need your help, is that people are going home uh, from work and there's only one parking space. Two people, if they use their, uh, uh, if they get the, uh, no, the barcode. If they, if they both have got barcodes, they can come in the village quickly and so forth and, and head home 
Once there, there's only a numbered spot for one car. What does the second person do? It's a difficult situation. So I'm, I'm pleading to you, to, if you can think of some way we can satisfy both uh, parties, and we will try to do something moving forward with that. So without making more mistakes, I thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Stewart. Uh, this is at the time of the year where we uh, watch the ball drop, and here at UCO we wait for the other shoe to fall. Uh, we had an individual come into the office the other day and wanted some help, and we told him to go to the clubhouse, and he said, where is that? I've only been living here three years. And so I just give you an example of the kinds of situations we have to deal with. It's, it's mind boggling. We had people call up and come into the office and wanted to know what we were going to do about the dead fish. Because the cold water had killed a lot of fish, they rose to the surface and uh, began to smell. And that explains why you saw so many of those predator birds all over the place. I, we could be nasty and tell them to get a bottle of uh, perfume or something like that, but we said, uh, you, uh, Yuko can't do anything about it. It's a WPRF problem. And uh, they walk out of the office angry at us for not rushing out with nets and cleaning up the fish situation. Uh, one other note is that uh, the sales for units here in the village for November dropped slightly, so there are many explanations for that, but we're waiting for the uh, next meeting to find out what happened in December, and then we'll get the yearly totals. But Century Village is still uh, a, a place that attracts a lot of people to uh, live here, and uh, it's a great place to live. The only thing that I could suggest to many of the people uh, sitting here is that when you drive home, just uh, watch out for the people who are walking down the middle of the street because they still are not uh, obeying the rules and regulations, and please drive slow. Thank you. Patricia. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see all of you. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. I certainly did. I never stay on this too long, so I'm going to say what I always say. Please, please be nice to each other. You don't have to love someone, but respect them. If you want to be treated with respect, then you have to give respect. So be kind, and it would be nice, like I see a lot of people alone in the building, I make sure they were right. Take out a few minutes of your day just to check on a neighbor, maybe share a meal with them, and it could be a cup of soup, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna end it with saying, God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Bob. Well, today I actually have quite a few things to say. Um, hopefully I won't be too long. First of all, good morning. Good morning. And Happy New Year, all right. Um, well, I want to thank all the people that have donated to the Toys for Tots run, uh, little little thing that we had going there. Um, it was very successful. And um, I took them directly to the Marines instead of them coming here to pick them up, just so you know. All right. Uh, once again, I'd like to state opposition to uh, um, this, the whole sauna thing. All right, I don't want to see new saunas, which are going to be really expensive. I'd rather see them fix the, the, the old ones and put a cage up above the heating element, and that would solve the problem of people putting things on them. All right. Um, speeding is still a, a, a major issue here in the village. There are a lot of people that think this is Indianapolis 500 here, and they need to slow down. I, I, I've actually had uh, at officers meeting, um, and, and I believe it passed, that we are gonna get an engineer's study to uh, um, evaluate whether or not we can put in speed tables 
All right. I'd like to see that happen and slow some of these people down. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think this is prop, this might not be the right place to do this, but I want to start some kind of a committee for veteran affairs here. We have a lot of vets that, that live here, and I'd like to see uh, the veterans get their due here, um, myself being one. Um, one of the things I'd like to see that committee do is, is try to raise some money for the veterans' home over at the VA. Uh, a lot of these guys, they're, you know, they're old, older, <clears throat> and uh, they can't take care of themselves, so I say let's take care of them. All right. And for motorcycle riders, at the end of the month, there is going to be a Cruising for Crime Stoppers ride. If anyone is interested, please contact me. Um, you, you can leave a message at Yuko, and I will get to you, all right? Um, there's, uh, it's gonna, it, we're talking about over a 1,000 motorcycles, and it's going to be an escorted affair. It's a beautiful ride. I went last year, and it was, it was awesome. They stopped somewhere in the middle of the ride. Uh, they feed you, and then they bring you back to wherever, wherever they're going to bring you back to. It is awesome. All right, if you guys like riding and, and being around a lot of motorcycles, because last year we had over 1,000. Um, it's on the 29th. 20, this month, on the 29th, I, I'll, the, the exact times, um, I'm not sure of. It's somewhere between 8 and 10 in the morning where it takes off. All right? And that's it. Have a good day. Thank you, Bob. Ed, you're up. Treasurer's report. Ed, yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I know it's been a problem. First off, I also want to wish everybody a happy and a very healthy New Year, which is very important. Outside of just giving you a quick financial report, on another topic, I was very disturbed to read Eva's article in the paper that we've come to the point, I thought this is a over 55 community, not a children's camp, that we have to be admonished like you're in kindergarten, that you have to get off the floor, you have to be here for this, here for that. Uh, I don't know if Eva has a kindergarten teacher's license, but this is not the first time that I've heard it, and I think in print it's a damn shame besides the speedy. And I think we have to look to our own house besides the wonderful report we got from the police. So there is no excuse whatsoever for adults to behave like that. I want to get to the financial report. This is the end of the year. I'm happy to say that overall, We've come out with a positive balance before the order to rip it apart. Many of you, we're trying to give more and more information, and this month you'll see the format changed. Unfortunately for me, and it may be for you, I don't think I would go with this again because I wear glasses and I'm having trouble reading my own report. And I think it's important that everybody has a chance to look at it and read it. Uh, I want to report that we have a very good performance as far as receivables from a <coughs> excuse me receivables from associations. Part of it, I think, is due to the fact that I've been publishing the accounts receivable. And part of it is for an extra effort that we placed just before Christmas, where we had 
outstanding forty-three or forty-seven thousand dollars because of this promotion of very nicely done, saying we want to check the balances. We collected thirty-three thousand dollars in less than a week. So, read your report. It's not our job to carry the associations. Once more, there will be another format, and also we are starting to feed the information to our outside auditors in an effort to get the job done. I await any questions. Uh, the budget, which I prepared with good help, is really under attack, and will, in the sense that we didn't get some important numbers until well after the, the budget had to be presented. The last thing is, you know, I've been promoting that we're not getting the proper interest uh, with the help of John Malloy here. We will present a pro where we stand now and hopefully get this done within January because our inaction costs this over $50,000. Any questions, please raise your hand. I don't know if I have the answer, but once again, my door is always open. And have a good and healthy new year. Thank you. I got a question for you, Ed. Uh, when you when you have someone or uh, a, a whole unit that is behind, right? Do they uh, lose their voting rights here in the delegate assembly? The Could same. You clear that? As, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me finish. The same as as a unit owner would lose their voting rights in their building yeah. if they fall behind. It doesn't. I'm not being You're talking about voting rights at a. Uh, committee meeting? Committee meetings at delegate assemblies, do they lose their voting rights th just the same? You know, uh, I think the meetings may that may we Maybe this should be directed to the CAM. Oh, uh, oh, you directed that to the CAM? Well, it, it, he would probably know. Uh, uh, the, the short answer to your question, Bob, is I understand what you're saying about the associations. A unit owner who is not in good standing or is in arrears could be um, precluded for running for the board. There is no provision for that in the UCO bylaws. Okay, that, that's all I want to know. Okay. Thank you, Ruth. Oh, a UCO reporter. Oh. You scared me. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. To those of you in the audience and out of the audience, if you've had a bad year, particularly those who had a grievous loss, my heart goes out to you. I hope that 2023 will be much better. Okay, on to the reporter. It's in your packet, but we made $22,000 for 2022. That averages about $1,835 a month. We had a good year. I hope it continues. Now I'll talk just a little bit about running for the board and vice president. Bobby will have more to say when she gets up, but bios are due in by January 16th. There's an outline in the UCO Reporter on page five that you should follow. Don't copy it and write your answers in. I cannot use that on the computer. Set it up in an email and email it to me. The address is there. So far, we have eight uh, bios that have come in. I'm very happy about that. I'd like to see that doubled so we can have a runoff. And we also have two vice presidents 
who have declared. And, uh, and that's about it, unless you have questions. Ruth. Thank you. Oh, Ruth. It said, have we eliminated nominations from the floor? No, that comes no. in February. They continue. So if you don't Nominations from the floor come in February. Bobby will talk about that when she gets up. Okay, that's fine, because it sounded like if you didn't send it in, you couldn't come up, vote. Mm, right. No, that has nothing to do with nominations from the floor. We want to get all that intend to run, and know they will, get your bios in by the 16th, so I can work on them and get them in the paper. And uh, Walter, our photographer, will be here in February to take photos. Years ago, for those of you that do know or do not know, we had about a staff of 10 to 12 people that used to make the monthly paper happen. Right now, the only person that does really keeps it together and makes it happen is this young lady, and I think she deserves a round of applause. <laughs> and she stays on top of every one of us to make sure that we contribute correctly so that you people have the best possible news and the best possible information on, at hand at any, any time during the month. Uh, Donald, you're up. Oh, Cam. Good morning, everyone. Um, just two hot topics this month. Uh, one you heard a little bit of earlier, um, dead fish in the lakes and canals. Not just dead fish, but also uh, turtles, iguanas, frogs. Um, our best guess, and we're pretty sure about this, Eva and I, is that that was from the cold. There's no issue with the water. The water's uh, uh, tested on a monthly basis. Uh, we're not seeing any algae uh, old blooms. So um, got a, quite a few reports on that. Obviously, they, they float, they stink, and the buzzards are having a field day. So I just wanted to let you know, I'm sure you were all hearing about that from your neighbors. Um, second thing is um, we've received several reports of coyotes on the property. Um, this is not a new phenomenon. Um, I've seen, uh, over the years, I've seen coyotes in almost all sections of Century Village, including right here on Clubhouse Island. Um, they're, they're deemed to be harmless. Uh, you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. No fence will hold them in. They'll, they'll pretty much go as they please. If you have a cat, probably you don't want to let them out at night. Um, but other than that, just you know, in case you hear about it, it's been up on social media, next door. Um, it, we, we have them, uh, we, and really nothing to worry about. And we keep an eye on it as well. All right, and that's all I have for this month, unless anyone has any questions for me. Thank you. I got one quick comment on that. Sure. I've lived in Arizona and New Mexico. Coyotes are not harmless, all right? They will, if you have a small dog, they will come and take it right out of your hands. All right, so you need to be careful. If you see one, report it, please. Drew Wright. That's it. That's it. Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Don. A quick question. Sure. I want to know what security car, the black or the white, takes care of what? Because I called. Ah, good question. There was a big black dog inside the tennis court ripping the tarp, whatever you want to call it, while the owner sat on her cell phone. Ah. I called up and they said, we don't handle dogs. Okay, this is a good question. And I, I, I'm gonna, now that you mention it, I'm gonna put that in my report this week, month. So th there is a difference. Um, there are two security contracts. One is WPRF and one is Yuko. It is the same vendor, uh, Platinum Group Security. The white car is the WPRF car. Um, and uh, the, the dark blue cars are the Yuko contract cars. However, um, if you call Yuko Security, they're supposed to contact the, the, their counterparts at WPRF. Okay. They, they shouldn't be telling you, we got nothing to do with that. That's unacceptable. So if you give me the uh, details, I'll, f I'll follow up on that. Okay. All right? Thank you. You have my email. Thank Good. Thank you, Donald. Um, I just want to uh, spend a couple of minutes 
We are going to be having elections for 10 board members and two vice presidents in March. It, I know that you're having annual elections. Once you have your annual election, make sure that your delegates form is filled out and turned in so that your building can vote during that period of time. A lot of people think, well, Seacrest manages my building. I filled in that and it's done. Different report. They update SunBiz on your corporate status. We have a different form that UCO uses, needs to be signed with alternate delegates, and it has to have your seal, and it usually has to be in the Wednesday before we need to use that form that gives Carolyn a chance to update our records. Don't show up at 12 o'clock on Thursday, the day before election, and say we have new officers. Just keep that in mind. Thank you. Uh, Bobby, would you like to come up? Come on down. <laughs> I figured I'd throw that in. Uh, most of this information has been given out to you, but I'll just reiterate. Election will take place on March 3rd. You know, the people sitting here in this room are the movers and shakers in Century Village. You volunteered your time in your buildings. Please consider volunteering just a bit more and put in an application to run for the executive board. You know, I don't have to tell you, Washington, D.C. is at a standstill right now. Why doesn't Century Village show the rest of the country how to run an election? Let's just get 10 or few. 10 people to run for the executive board and keep Century Village moving forward. In the packet that we have today are the rules for nominations from the floor. Please keep them in mind when you come next to the next meeting so we can get the procedure running smoothly. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll be glad to take care of them, but get your uh, nominating your bios into Ruth on time. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Do we have any unfinished business? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. Come up to the microphone, please. Fausto, last month I gave you a letter <coughs> to give to our attorney, which you gave to Donald. I gave it to Donald. Yes. Donald, did you give the letter to the attorney, and did you get an answer? No and no. Why didn't you give it to the attorney? I have not been so directed by the president of UCO. Is there a problem? You are, are you the president, temporarily pr the president? No. I'm not the president. I'm just filling in for the president. So did you let David Israel know about that? I did. He has the, he has the letter. And Thank he has much. to make the determination as to whether to give it to the attorney or not? That is correct. I just want everybody to sort of get an idea. I'm not going to read the letter, but there were questions at the end of the letter. One of the questions was, does the medical building come under HUD guidelines? Question two, is a religious organization which does not represent all religions, religious groups allowed within a HUD community? Question number three, if the county commissioners allowed the zoning change, which I understand they did, to add pools to the medical building, does this mean that all residents are allowed to use these pools? Question number. Next question. Does Yuko have the legal right to challenge these zoning changes? I feel that this is a very important thing, and it should be addressed. And I think you should bring it to David again to let him give it to the, our attorney, because these are things that are extremely important to our village. Thank you. Coming up. My name is Eddie Mack. I'm at 168 Salisbury G. 
I was actually at the town hall with Mr. Weiss when he was doing that PowerPoint presentation. The attorney went up there, gave a beautiful PowerPoint presentation. They did everything they were supposed to do, but it kind of behooves me that they had to make an amendment to the zoning laws, which is unacceptable, and I don't understand why nobody actually came down, looked at the facility with the four stop signs and the traffic that it's gonna cause. It's unacceptable and it should not happen. Wasn't there another person that wanted to come? Yes. Please come up. Uh, Mr. Chair. Hold, hold on, I have, I have a speaker. Hold on, Ed. Okay, uh, no problem. I just have a quick question. I've been wondering for a while about it. All over Century Village is no feeding to wildlife signs. Yeah. Okay, if we have an association that violates that on a continual basis, is that because each condominium's property is not included in those signs or can they be enforced? Donald, go ahead. Uh, as far as, um, I'll tell you two things about the feeding of the animals. The first is here at Century Village, each of the associations manages their own property and they govern it accordingly. Um, as, if an association chooses to enforce that, um, they, they can. Um, I can tell you as a um, longtime property manager from New York, um, I have never had any luck getting a person who feeds animals to curb their behavior. It, it just doesn't happen. It, it's a psychological thing. Um, the person gets a certain amount of pleasure out of feeding the animal, makes them feel good. Um, the best I've ever done as a property manager and, and as a maintenance supervisor is to get the person to do the feeding someplace else. And we're talking every kind of animal from pigeons to seagulls to actual human beings. Um, and, and yeah, that happened. Um, it's, uh, so just some advice for your association. Um, it, it's, got to be a little bit sensitive about it. The best you can hope for, defer them over to a grassy area or, or something like that. Nobody likes duck poop on their, on their walkways. Okay? okay, thank you. You're welcome. Ed, go ahead. I just wanted to add, I don't profess to be a lawyer at any time. However, one of the items on uh, Olga's letter, when I was reviewing what was going on, is there is no doubt at the time that Century Village was built, it was not legal to have a house of worship on our property, and that's why the current synagogue it has its own piece of land. However, I don't remember the exact date, but it's not more than 10 years ago, that law changed, and there's no more restriction about having houses of worship on uh, outfits like us. You know, sometimes they call it an HOA, a condominium, but that, that totally changed. That was a HUD, HUD law that has changed. I, I do think that the last item which I didn't hear too good, which got this over uh, terrific replause uh, by, uh, that was presented by Olga, should be attended to. And I think that was about making physical changes to the buildings. So to sit here and applaud doesn't do a damn thing. I do think that should be presented to our attorney. The rest is up to you, people. Do we have any new business? Wait a minute, somebody's coming. We have guests. Wait. Sure, go ahead, ma'am. I haven't, I haven't been here for many, many years. Just not even a year, but. Um, I was reading in the paper about the, the transport, about the committees, and I don't know how to get in touch with any of them. Now, the Transportation Committee has an event coming up on the 18th, but I have no idea who to talk to about it, how to sign up. 
for any of the committees. I don't see any information on how you can communicate with them. Patricia will be I'm, happy to answer. She's the Absolutely. I'm chair of the Transportation Committee. We just had a meeting the other day. It's usually the first Tuesday of the month, right, Ruth? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anytime you want to come to a meeting, please feel free to come. Any questions you have, please feel free to see me. I'm there usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You're where? At th you go. Okay. And does that help? It does. Okay. And um, all you people that, that serve so faithfully on the UCO committee, you know, I'm not, I'm not a delegate, but I don't know anybody's name or their position. And it, do you read the paper, the UCO read paper? Because everything is in there, yeah. all the committees and, and the people's yeah, but names. Not the, um, not the committees. There's no information about the committees, but thank you. Okay, you come in if you have any questions, okay? Hi, I'm Jean Berman. I'm an alternate delegate for Northampton N. Could you get a little closer to the mic so everybody okay, could hear you? Okay, is that better? Yes. Okay, so I'm Jean Berman. I'm an alternate delegate for Northampton N. And I've been to all of the meetings, the zoning and the, uh, you know, the uh, county commission and so forth. And I spoke at several of them, if you saw those. And the thing is, that built, the medical building is privately owned. As such, UCO doesn't really have authority over it. It's not association land. It's a, it's a piece of private property. Right. It's in the middle of Century Village, yes, but it's private property. And as such, uh, if the people who own it want to put in swimming pools, or as it turned out, they decided to come up with uh, having just one pool, which I think is better. Personally, I would have preferred they didn't have any and I spoke against having them, but you know the the county commissioners said that no, you know they were within the zoning rules, and so that's it. Uh, you know the only thing we could do is make an offer to buy the building, but uh, other than that, it's mm -hmm. private property. If they're conforming to the zoning laws, the HUD thing has nothing to do with it. So, uh, you know, I think that's the reason why, uh, you know, not, yep. not sending the uh, letter to the lawyer because yeah. there's really no grounds for it. And I mean, even if UCO decided to challenge it, the fact is it is private property. Okay, we, we have Thank your you. point, ma'am. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Go ahead. Well, I'm John Malloy. I'm the president of Stratford B. I'm also on the finance committee and the budget committee. And I'd like to hear what Mr. Grossman just said about our budget. There was a lot of work done this year on the budget, and we had a lot of tweaking to do. What I'd like to suggest, we're going to talk about uh, what we can do with our money. We have funds in the account we can use, and uh, we can buy CDs. And it's in our bylaws that we can buy CDs. Right now, I see them at 45 to 5%. So by investing in, in a CD, which is guaranteed, the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Company, we could earn between $100,000 to $150,000 a year back on our own money. So I think we should do this. Uh, I like to put up a, I like to um, make a motion that we actually go and buy CDs. Currently, as far as I'm aware, we're in SWIFT accounts, and that money is already in CDs. Okay. I have to look at that. What was that? Okay. You said it's already in Swift. All right. I can't hear. CDs I, I don't know. The treasurer should know that. Right. I just asked him and he shook his Excuse head. Excuse me. Could you comment on this, Ed? The treasurer knows that the uh, sweep account banks That's pay nothing. I inquired to the two banks that we use. Now, if we embark on trying to buy individual bank CDs, and this is going back, that's why I said we lost $50,000, you would have to pick 20 
individual banks who are FDIC insured. Now, I brought this up before. I have a schedule which John and I went through, and he's got 45 years, let's say, on the street, that a brokerage who I questioned would exercise and not charge us interest to buy all the CDs and we've gone through them, we've rated them, and the answer, to, ex, excuse me, no, let me, let let me no, finish. No, let's second and then do the discussion. Oh, okay. What? What? Thank you. Is there a second? Oh, I just want to clear it up. I was asked to have the vendor come in and explain and go through and give us a total schedule. I did prepare it. Uh, the meeting that was supposed to be happen, I was told, was not open. What we've been doing is fiddling around and wasting money. And we're all facing a year coming forward with major increases to our budget which was not accounted for unless someone here got a terrific deal, let's say, on insurance. It's a simple matter. Actually, if you go in the past, it never came to the delegate assembly. It never had to be approved by the officers. I don't mind being very, very open. But you're not going to do better than no commission, and you're not going to be do better than what John, I, and the broker prepared. And we have it every which way a Sunday, lighted, not lighted, straight ahead. But when I proposed this, it was simple. If you took five million dollars and put it, John's being a very, uh, very cautious, but you can get four percent. That's two hundred thousand dollars pre-tax, and that could help us, all of us, and it it is a nonsense. I can't think of a better word I just to I sit on our. Do you know what? and not do it. So I, I applaud John for taking the floor, Dan for seconding, and I think, therefore, we should go ahead and have a vote. How about our discussion? No. no. Yes, yeah, go right ahead. We're still in discussion. One of the things my concern is, all right, you put it in a CD and it ties up that money and, and if you have to pull it out, you get a penalty. Is that correct? No. It depends on the bank that you get the CD right. with. Early withdrawal does carry a penalty in most banks. So what's the use of putting it in if, you're gonna, if you need it and you Guys, pull it out? You know, I appreciate this discussion, but as I have uh, said before, I don't want a speaker. I want to see something in writing. If you have one institution or 20 institutions, something in writing that the committee can bring forth to the officers, that we can discuss it. And if it's viable, we'll bring it to the delegates so that they can make their decision. But we need something concrete in writing. No That's all uh, I asked, and I've asked. Uh, let me that. answer that, if you don't mind. I'd like to see that in writing. It's not required. This is an overly, overly variation from our bylaws. Read the bylaws. Read what the treasurer could do. There is nowhere that the officers have to approve. Would any officer know any bank that's not that's insured, that's better than the next bank? This is a total nonsense. It's a waste of time, and it's a waste of your money, and my money. 
Okay. And if you recall, when we had a vote on the T-bills, it actually went through, except for the current bylaws, which says the amount of people in the room. Okay. So I appreciate that. But I'd like to know who on the offices has a better knowledge, has worked on the street, than John here. Uh, excuse me, Ed. I don't want to make a debate. But any time we bring something to the delegates, whether it's a budget or a contract, we hand them a piece of paper to look at, and that's what I'm asking. Eventually, these people, these delegates, have to vote on it, and they're going to want to see something in writing. Right I want wrong. to know what would writing. You vote on, would you vote on something yeah, that you what, can't see? Look, you could no. applaud whatever you want. Okay. I want to see the writings <laughs> when a prior treasurer did it, and when the prior treasurer emptied our treasury down to $30,000 from reserves, that it was proved by the officers. It's up we have, to, we have a motion on the floor. There is a motion floor. on the floor. Uh, Fausto is able to say whatever he wants. It's up to you to decide. You want to lose another 10000 We have other people here that want to talk. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. At this point, I'm, gonna, I'm going to say that this motion is out of water at this time. On do what basis? Do the delegates agree with me? No. You know. I didn't say that. Well, you're requiring him to do things that are not there. Okay. Okay, well. he should be able to do it and to... The concern. He can't no, do it. No, to the concern about. Ma'am, he can't do it. You have to vote on it. I know that. Let's vote on it. I don't have a microphone. The point is, is that you can ladder those CDs so that you don't have to worry about money being. Oh God, here we go. All right, go ahead, Donald. Ma'am, and and Ed could give what you more Olga? detail on this. Um, our CDs that we currently have, uh, they are laddered. Right. That's so that's a that's. Tied up. I'm, recomm I'm recommending five million out of ten. And also, you're able to buy CDs at a different range interest rate. Right. That there's no penalty when you cash them in. Right. I would appreciate all these come. No. I am willing. This is getting so far out of hand. To ask now. the. I have to ask a broker, we can make it up, but I'm willing, uh, the broker, and you could pick whatever broker who is willing to work without commission, uh, to do a video, to do a Zoom meeting, because this is a total nonsense. Okay. Total. Can we just call for a vote? Steve, how many people have left? Olga, Olga still. I know. <laughs> Olga, go ahead and say what you say your piece. Because I have a motion, I have a second. I'm trying. You've also declared it out of order. Already. I, I've. I'm waiting. We're out of order, but anyway, Steve, how many people have left? You, you still have Olga here. Wait, wait, in a second. No, you're still good. To discuss. Still good. Olga, go ahead. Go ahead, Olga. I'm, I'm not sorry. giving up. I just want to remind everybody that this is a HUD community, and HUD operates with certain rules. One of the rules in a HUD community is that any facility in a HUD community must be available to all the residents. Now before we have everybody invading the religious pool, I'm trying to get something finalized in a legal sense so we know where we stand. That's it, okay? So please, I'm going to remind you again, take it to the lawyers. Can we vote now for the motion that's on the floor? Actually, actually uh, Fausto, I have a comment on it before yeah, go ahead. we vote. Um, look, when I bring anything to you, my board of directors here, that has anything to do with money, I make sure that I have something for you to read, and I try to get it to you in advance. Um, 
I think I understand Ed's motion, um, but I think that maybe this is something perhaps we should table and allow the Finance Committee to put forth a, a written proposal with details that we all can read. Um, I want to read them because I'm a unit owner and I'm a delegate, and, and you know my wife is going to have to vote on it. I'm sure she's going to want to read it. Um, so that's just my input. I think this is a, not a, this not, I didn't hear anything that I thought was wrong. I think this is something that needs a little bit of staff work. That, that's all I got. Thank you. Then do it. Then what are we here for? Okay. Ma'am, I'll, I'll answer your question. Um, your your que the, 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 the lady's question was, um, he has the legal right to do whatever he wants. Well, in that case, why, why are we voting on it? All right, so that's all I have to say. I, don't, I, I think I understand Ed's uh, motion. I'd like to see it on paper so you guys will read it, and, and for myself as well, all right? That's it. Can I, can I make a quick comment here? You, you guys are saying he can do whatever he wants. I, that that, you that sounds did. like what you said to me, all right? You just you're, you're saying he can do what he wants. Yes, you did, man. That, oh, my God. We go. Donald. All right, here, here's the deal. Uh, hold right. on. We have a board, yeah. all right? We meet and we decide. What he brings to us I want more people. what he wants to do, and we vote on it. After we vote on it, it comes to the delegate assembly. It goes from committee to us, to the officers, and then to the delegates. I, I'm sorry, the exec, I, I, I keep forgetting about you guys. <laughs> sorry. It goes, it goes to the executive committee, and then it comes here. The, the, right? the thing is, is, we're making up rules as sure. we go along. We're making, this is. To the executive committee? You could committee? discuss this, I think. He's responsible to, to you. No. He's, he's responsible he's on, he's on to you, he's, the delegates. He, he, he's. Steve, how many people left? Do we have, do, how many did you collect over there? Done. Five and 19? I'm sorry? What are we presently getting? You'd have to ask the treasurer on that. We, we can't vote on anything because you've just lost your quorum. Okay, okay. so let's not vote. Uh, anytime money is spent in the village, all right, okay. big amounts of money, and he's talking five I, million. Okay, it, it needs to be voted on. Bob, that, it's enough. We're not going to discuss this anymore. New business is over. We've lost our quorum. We have guests here that want to speak. Excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm trying to ask you. Ma'am, I'm going to ask you to sit down, please, so I can continue with this meeting. Thank you. Commissioner Weiss, please. Oh, boy. <laughs> Quick, you're losing your audience. Change of venue. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you. Happy New Year. Um, first, I just I want to extend my sincere thanks to all of you who I came out and voted in November, and thank you for your overwhelming support for my reelection. And for even those who didn't uh, vote for me, I, I, I'm sure you know that we always want to be available to represent you. And it, 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 whether you vote or not, vote for me or not, that's not important. But I do want to thank you for that. Also, want to let you know that my peers uh, on the county board of county commissioners. Uh, has chose me as the mayor this year, so I'll be serving as your mayor of Palm Beach County. And a couple of couple of uh, notes. So one is uh, COVID. It we have a new variant. It is seems to be uh, taking over from some of the previous. There's good news and bad news. The good news is we have boosters that are available. They're readily available. Can be found at any 
drugstore today. You can pick them up, uh, walk in, and get, a, get that shot. So I encourage you. The bad news, is, well, the other good news is about 90% of our folks in Palm Beach County, over 65, have received both shots uh, the, of the original um, Shot of the original. Now, the bad news is about 30%, only 30% have got, got the boosters yet. So I had five. You had how many? Five. Good, good for you. I'm You're safe. I'm collecting them like baseball cards. All right. The other, there was a, a question that came up uh, regarding signal issues and who to contact. And you can call our office. That's the easiest thing to do. We'll follow up and take care of it. If you see a problem with one of the signals, just call us at 561-355-2202, and my staff will be happy to follow up. But if you want to call Traffic Control directly, um, their number is 561-684-4030. Again, 561 561- 684-4030, and you can make a report directly to them. But I say make it easy. Just call us, and we'll take care of it for, on your behalf. Um, I want to acknowledge that Niels Heimrichs from my office is here. He's always uh, made himself available. So if you need anything, happy to uh, help you out with that. So with that, just looking forward to a great 2023, a happy, healthy one to all of you and your families, and uh, have a wonderful day. I'm not sure what addendum you're talking about. I wasn't at that meeting at the courthouse. Oh, you mean at the governmental center? Yes, but that's not the courthouse. I, I, I'm confusing you with a different meeting. House of Worship. Yes, okay. and yes. <clears throat> Um, the reason being, and, and I don't, without getting into a long discussion, because yes. I know, uh, but we were advised by our attorneys that when you have, and this facility, understand, this facility was built before we had some of the modern ways that we um, create these kinds of communities. So it was built in, a, in an older style of code. And one of the things that they did was they created this commercial area within Century Village, that is private property has been mentioned earlier. Well, when you have a commercial facility where you're bringing people together if in a use, and it's not an addendum, it's a use of how you can use that facility, and, what, and the request is to put a use in uh, for a house of worship. Well, well, if you're saying we're gonna bring people together for commercial purposes, but we're going to exclude people because they're coming together to worship, that's a violation of the law. Mm. And we would be um, liable for a lawsuit, and we were advised we, we would not have a good case, and that was what our attorney advised. So, um, you know, I know it's a difficult, it's been a difficult situation here, but as I said at that meeting, you know, it, if we want to change the laws, and we change the laws, but th this this is not a county uh, county issue per se. Um, but that's that's the reality, and uh, you can't discriminate. You cannot discriminate um, against anybody. No, I, I, you can ask me after the meeting because yeah. I know they. <laughs> no, after the meeting. No, correct. No. That's not correct. No. Listen, if it's a... If no, it, it will not be tax-free. What is the building going to be taxed? The building will be taxed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If you have a personal question, I'm sure the commissioner will answer it for you. Hey, Fausto. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Fausto. <clears throat> yes. Good and welfare? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Miss, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, first of all, I would say that Mr. Weiss? the term house of worship is a little misleading. Call it a room of worship. It's only 10% of the building. The rest will be taxed. Secondly, for good and welfare, I don't know how many of you have received a letter ostensibly from FPL guaranteeing 
your external electrical insurance. That is not for condominiums. Do not start sending money to the people who paid FPL to use their name. You are not responsible for external electrical repairs. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, next, we have Derek from Bryan Mass Office. Hey, Derek. <laughs> Good morning. I didn't forget you this time. Sir. Thank you so much. Good morning. Happy New Year. Um, as most of you know, I'm very passionate, have a lot of chutzpah, so I'm going to do something differently this year, thinking about what was said at the board, thinking about what Patricia said with reference to be nice. Instead of standing here and pontificate, I would uh, like to ask that if you all have any questions of me related to the new Congress to please ask. Additionally, I would like to ask if there's anything that this beautiful community of Century Village would like for us to do once Washington, D.C. gets their house in order, please let us know to include fraud forms, social security forms, veterans events, and things of that sort. But seeing no questions, thank you, God bless you, and have a great day. And we have a representative from uh, Ann Gannon's office, Amy. Here, please come up. All right, next time I don't want to follow a tall person. <laughs> so happy new year, everyone. I hope everyone had a healthy and happy holiday. So I know everyone starts the new year with your resolutions. So I'm sure some people are resolving to save some money. So just a reminder, if you've not paid your property taxes, 2% discount this month, 1% discount next month. You still have time to sign up for our IPP program, which is our installment payment plan, and that would apply to next year's taxes, and you still receive about a 4% discount when you pay your taxes that way. You're split into four um, quarterly payments. And also, as a reminder, if you haven't gotten your vehicle registration into us on time and you've realized, oh, I am going to expire today, the Publix at the Village Common Shopping Center. Inside there, we have a kiosk, which works like an ATM. Just bring your bill in. It's got a PIN number on it. You can go to that machine, enter that PIN number. It does require a credit card. This whole transaction will take you about two to three minutes, and you will receive your vehicle registration right there on the spot. So thank you so much. Do we have any other, anything else for the good or the order? <laughs> Hold on, we have, I have to recognize this young lady up here. And so we're not. I would just like everybody to go home and read the definition of a treasurer. It is his fiduciary responsibility to invest safely the money for the corporation. He is a treasurer of. Yeah. And by tying his hands to require a vote that is unnecessary, you are costing the organization thousands of dollars. <coughs> he was being courteous to tell you what he was doing in a safe investment. He was not spending money. He's investing the money in a safe way. FDIC insured CDs are not a, a dangerous thing. No one said they OK? And I think that the board members really should go home and read the definition of their positions. We you have are not bylaws acting that appropriate. define our positions. We have bylaws that define our positions. I understand that, and I am on other boards. And read your bylaws, the definition of a treasurer. Read our bylaws. Don't get into it, Bob. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate the fact that you said read your bylaws. The bylaws are as clear as mud on some things, but on that, it is very, very clear. There's no doubt that there's a big job ahead for this fellow Richard Handelsman, because the whole bylaws have been diluted to nothing. 
Yes. And they have to be reviewed and done over again. They are I had a, one I had a motion the, to adjourn. I, do I have a second? Thank you, everybody. See you I'm glad time. you did that. I'm really glad you did that. We're adjourned. Have a good day.